Here's three exercises you must do if you're a beginner. You guys want to guess uh, we what the first the, one is? <laughs> you, better, you better know the answer to these. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, if we start, the very first one is has has to be squat. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for Definitely. so many for so many reasons. Yet, I what's interesting about that is that I, I think that this we communicate this all the time. Yet, I still don't. As much as I've seen the increase in the popularity of, of the squat rack in the last decade, I still don't think it's a cornerstone of most workouts. Do you? No, it's con it's still considered, um, I would say like a- Advanced mm -hmm. exercise or something, yeah. right? It's a fun, so if you want to categorize movements and exercises and pick like the ones that you need to do or you must do, um, you know, and you want to look at that, what that context looks like is uh, bang for your buck. Okay, so I do one, you know, set of this exercise, I'm going to get more of a return than if I did one set of other exercises. So that's one. Number two, uh, does it have a lot of carryover uh, to quality of life? That's another thing to look at. Like you could do some exercises, get really good at them, and then there's a little bit of carryover, and then others just make you much more functional in your everyday life. Yeah. That's number two. And then number three, is it uh, a, a functional human movement? In other words, is this a, a, a primal pattern? Is, is it a necessary movement pattern that you need to train because if you lose it, then you lose so many other movement patterns. And when you look at uh, exercise in that context, the squat yeah. is there. It's right there, right? A, a good, well-performed squat will give you better results in terms of muscle building, fat loss, than the next three or four exercises uh, combined. Uh, it, it improves your quality of life dramatically because it, it strengthens the lower body, the lumbopelvic hip area. It, it improves stability in the core. Um, and then in terms of it being a, a fundamental hum, human movement, uh, if you don't practice the squat and you start to lose the ability to squat, uh, you start to lose the ability to do a lot of different things. So yeah. it's very important that you practice this movement. Well, with that in mind, I mean, I don't have your cheat sheet in terms of like uh, which ones you pick, but I would assume like one of them would have to be like the vertical press, like a yeah. shoulder press, because again, to that point, like if you don't vertically press, you do uh, lose that ability, which is something that you need to have. I mean, you're going to be reaching up overhead. You're going to be holding things overhead and you're going to need to be able to stabilize that, have the strength. So, I mean, that, that would definitely be a fundamental no, of, one. Of course. That's why they call it the squat of the upper body. But to continue on with the squat points that you're making too, I also think that um, our community has done a really disservice to, um, you know, the general population especially the hypertrophy based coaches and trainers, because I think that we've communicated that we've told people that they don't, you don't need to, Oh, yeah. it's, it's this whole idea that you have to squat is, is not true. You can build all this muscle by doing this and this. Yeah. In fact, here's studies to show that this activates the quads and the glutes as much or more. And I remember being a 20 year old kid, uh, not wanting to squat and hearing this, information it was less like ah, oh, exactly i knew i didn't need to do it. i'll just leg press today you know and i just think that we do a disservice to so many people for all the other reasons of course uh building muscle is also important and burning body fat but just the carryover to overall life and like you getting good at the squat um completely eliminated my bursitis uh my low back uh, chronic yeah. pain that i had it's huge i mean so if you if you can get to a place and you don't have to be crazy strong but get to a place where you can squat uh, good weight you know your body weight or a little more um full range of motion it requires good healthy strong mobile ankles good healthy strong mobile hips uh good core strength yep. and i mean it just it requires so many uh, important things that as we age we tend to, and you guys know this from all the clients you train how often did you deal with knee pain and hip pain and low back pain and a lot of that started that, that chronic pain that these 50 year old 60 year old clients complain about that chronic pain came from weakness and instability in a lot of those joints that are addressed in a good squat through full range of motion. It's funny when you when you hear of um, Westerners complaining of public bathrooms in other countries. It's always because they're the public bathrooms that require you to squat, and they'll be like, "I can't do it." You know, these are like mm -hmm. twenty something year olds, thirty something year olds, and they they're like, "I don't, I can't sit in a squat. It's it's uncomfortable." That's well, because you stop squatting. 
um, we sit in chairs. That's about as close as we get to a squat. So what happens is you lose the ability. Mm -hmm. But if you're watching me, we, we, we all have kids, but you ever watch little kids, they squat comfortably. Yeah. It is a very natural, fundamental human movement that you your body, you know, for lack of a term, forgets um, if you don't practice it. And then what comes along with that is pain. And, and you're right, Adam, what, what the fitness industry does is it sells the visual uh, appeal of a fit and healthy body. So they talk in terms of like body parts, quads, glutes, hamstrings, yeah. sculpt, shape, you know, and we even talk like that on the podcast at times to, to bring people in. But that really is a reflection of a fit and healthy body. Well, if you have great looking quads, hamstrings, and a great looking body, but you can't do a squat, yeah, uh, that's a problem. It would it would be like looking like you're you can walk really well, but you can't. Like walking is is a, is a fundamental human movement. By the way, at some point in the future, this may be a discussion around walking as well. You don't need to walk; we just glide everywhere with these you know whatever machines, and you will end up forgetting or, or not being able to do this again. This this fundamental human movement. Now on the in, on the flip side, to sell this in terms of results, when you train movements that your body uh, was designed to do or evolved to do, whatever you believe, you tend to get the best results. So a squat just delivers incredible results from a strength athletic performance, muscle building, fat loss, sculpt your body, shape it. Like when I got clients who worked out on their own uh, already regularly, and then they hired me and they couldn't squat, getting them to be able to squat and then squat, that alone blew away everything that they did. Everything that they did. I mean, I'd have them, I'd have them stop leg pressing, hack squatting, leg extensions. Like, okay, we're not doing that. We're going to get, we're going to practice and get good at squatting and we have to, some issues to address. Let's improve mobility and stability. And then, you know, after a couple months, now we can squat. Now we'll start squatting. And they're like, I've never looked this good. And I'm doing one exercise versus these other three that I used to do all the time. I'm glad you said that because I know that there's people probably listening that have seen me train somebody in their 60s and said, I don't remember you squatting with that client. Or what if you can't squat? You're telling me that I, I'm yeah. just going to admit. No. You're going to get clients, and we've talked about this so many times, that you you need to meet them where they're at, right? And that might be somebody who I, I can't squat on day one mm -hmm. with them, but the goal is to get to them. And I've had clients that I've trained for years, and we actually never did get to the squat, so that's a possibility. But the programming, the training, the mobility work that we were doing was always in pursuit of getting, getting that. Right. You know, getting to a place where we can squat. The worst thing I think you can do is to just accept, oh, yeah, squatting, I was told was bad for me or I shouldn't do it. Therefore, I just, I, I'm not ever going to do it again. It's like because it's a, a such a fundament, fundamental human movement, why would you just write that off as a possibility? And it's like, no, let's let's solve this. Let's find out why you think you have quote unquote bad knees or bad hips and let's get to the bottom of it. And a good coach and trainer can do that is they'll help them get to the root cause of all this chronic pain. And that with the goal and the intent of one day, we want to get back to being able to squat again, because then once you can get to that place, and this is what I've talked a lot about with my own personal journey, which was so interesting was the amount of mobility work that I had to put in to get to a, a deep full range of motion squad and to address the bursitis and the low back chronic pain was a lot of work. It was a lot of work for a, several years, very, very consistent. But the cool part was once I got there, now as long as I squat, full range of motion. You keep it. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to do all that other work anymore because it addresses that. In order for me to go all the way down, ass to grass, I've got to have good ankle mobility. I've got to have good hip mobility. I have a good core stability. Like all those things I get from just continuing to do it. And so now the work of keeping it up is much easier than it was to get to that point. Yeah. Now, Justin, you brought up the overhead press. That's definitely uh, if a, a movement you need to incorporate, um, the shoulder joint is very complex mm -hmm. joint, a full, a full overhead extension all the way down, all the way up works. The shoulder joint, the scapula, the scapula has to rotate out as the humerus moves up. You have to incorporate when you're standing stability in your core. It is a fundamental human movement that you will lose if you don't practice. Like when I got clients hmm. who are in advanced age, uh, many of them couldn't fully extend their arm above their head. Not yeah. weight, not even lifting they any weight. Lift up further with their raising their heels. They come up on their toes, yeah. or the, or they would lean back, but they couldn't fully extend their arm up above their head. Um, now these weren't like ninety year old people; they were people in their sixties, yeah. and they couldn't fully extend their arm over the head. Why they stopped 
training and strengthening of that. Now, from a results perspective, it develops the upper body very well. For athletic purposes, uh, performance uh, purposes, I would argue yeah. that an overhead press, uh, and I could argue this all day, is more important than a bench press yeah. uh, for athletic uh, performance. So you, you need to do some kind of a full extension overhead press to get that full upper body development and maintain health uh, of that whole shoulder joint. There's the shoulders, so much going on in the shoulder. <laughs> you yeah. know? So much. And it's one of the more common areas that people hurt themselves. Yeah. Of course, you have the back and the knee. Huge area for dysfunction. Shoulder's very, very close. Now, what do, you, what do you guys think it is about that? Like, why is this one that is overlooked so much? The first thing that comes to mind for me is, I think when most people look at the shoulder press, they think just the shoulder. Yeah. And you don't realize that a full range of motion overhead press like that is literally a full upper body. I mean, everything everything that has to stabilize it. and yeah. su and support the shoulder girdle, mm -hmm. which is all kinds of muscles in the front, all kinds of muscles in the back, plus the shoulder, plus the trap. Yeah. You have all of these the muscles. Rotator cuffs, everything. Yes, that have to work in order to perform this movement. And so it is actually this, you know, huge bang for your buck type, of, like the squat. That's why they call it this, the squat of the upper body is because that whole shoulder girdle area has to be supported to do a good full range of motion with good control all the way up and stability. Everything's getting engaged and needs to work together. And so, again, it's another one of those things where, oh, you think because you're limited to it, you just write it off, I'll never do it, where, again, the pursuit of getting to that place where you can do this could benefits that entire area. So if you've ever had neck stuff, shoulder stuff, upper back yep. issues, mid back mm -hmm. stuff, like you got all, all that gets addressed in learning now, to perform a great overhead now press. Now most people do some kind of an overhead press in a workout, but they don't do a full range of motion. They don't do it standing. Oftentimes it's with the back supported or it's on a machine. Again, they're not doing full extension. They're not coming all the way down. And so shoulder injuries become more common as a result of these uh, of this improper technique and lack of emphasis on this. Because the shoulder joint is very complex. I mean, it's, it's the reason why we could throw with accuracy. It's why we became the apex predator is we have this 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 humerus that moves in this this joint, but we have the scapula, the shoulder blade that moves along with it and can retract and depress and can externally rotate. And we have this humerus that needs to stabilize. And, and you get a lot of that, which is a basic standard, well performed standing overhead press with full form. It's one of the best exercises you could do for the upper body to maintain that that and there, there is a tendency too because there's a lot of machines like to your squat point earlier like there's ways to kind of like address uh certain parts of the shoulder and like build and develop the shoulder but uh to really stabilize it um this is where too you're going to see some lower back issues you're going to yeah. see some stabilizing issues where people get injured uh, because it, not only are we working the shoulder, but like, you know, it's the whole body, it's everything in unison. And, and to be able to brace the spine while you're doing this is, is paramount. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide. It's the benefits of eating whole foods. This gives you a shopping list. What foods are best for proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's recipe samples. It's all based on real whole natural foods. And it's a free guide. It's totally free. You can get it if you go to wholefoodsguide.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. You know, a, a, another problem with this is you can have a well-developed looking shoulder that has poor function. This is actually quite common. Yeah. You see this often in bodybuilders. A lot. They have yeah. really round delts. And then you tell them to, you have them do a full range of motion shoulder press where it comes all the way down the upper chest, full extension while they're standing. And they can't. And, and their shoulder hurts <laughs> yeah. because they're training these kind of short ranges of motion, just trying to develop the muscle. So now, by the way, there's no trade-off. Uh, full range of motion will develop better shoulders anyway. So it's not like you're losing out on development for function. It's both. That's why this is such a key exercise. And if you're a beginner, practicing this will really improve upper body stability. And again, that shoulder health, which is so important. And then lastly is a row, a well-executed uh, type of a row that really pulls the shoulder blades back and down, allows you to get that good posture. The, the mid back has to be one of the most, uh, probably one of the top three, right? Number one being the core, maybe in the hips, but the mid back has to be one of the most underdeveloped musculature, uh, musculatures in, uh, yeah. just modern it's counter to what you do all day long. It's yeah. it just, it's so weak. Um, we don't ever stabilize with the shoulders. In fact, when I would get new clients and I'd have them do a row, nobody could do a row the right way. They could pull the weight back. But nobody can. In fact, when I would pull their shoulder blades back and get them in position, it was like I was moving 
You know what it felt like? It felt like you get a rusty machine. You add some WD-40 and you finally start <laughs> to get moved. They would look at me and go, what's happening? And then they'd feel like how open things were. And it would blow their minds. Well, that's because we just do, we do everything in front of us. Yeah. You know? We do everything in front of us. You're never going to find anybody doing this. And so those muscles just go to sleep. I mean, and, uh, you talked about this earlier. Just We don't use it. We lose it. And I think that that's not being addressed. And then when people finally decide they're going to do create these movements, they don't realize that they have rounded themselves so forward that even when they're performing a movement like a row, thinking that they're doing their work the right way, they're still not getting the scapula to retract and actually engage all that mid-back, which, by the way, plays right into the, the exercise that we just talked about before. Yep. So this is why these three are so important was they work because well together. if you can do all of those really well like your overall movement for your upper body and lower body pretty good from a health perspective yeah. from strength for joint stability and strength like is going to be pretty damn good and you'll actually develop a pretty good physique literally just practicing those three movements Isn't i just yeah i just think it's uh, unfortunate that we get in the weeds sometimes and, and again I, I think to uh profession our our space our professionals our peers uh, with debating things that I think are so nuanced or splitting hair difference. And we lose a lot of the general population on the things that are really going to give them the greatest return. And it's like, man, I'd have to say 80, 90% of the general population, if you just got good at these three movements, you're going to live a very healthy, strong, mobile life if you just practice that. And if you're already at late in the game, and you've lost some of those abilities, working toward, that becomes more important than the 30 pounds of body fat you think you need to lose. That becomes more important than looking a certain way in that dress. Like th this becomes the most important thing and you'll still get that other thing. You'll it still get, to yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's actually the fastest way to get those other things that we tend to focus on most, but it's like, that's the path to do that. And I think that we've overcomplicated that for the general population. Totally. All right. I got some really, you know, you guys heard me talk about this last night in our, our GLP one. Justin didn't, but I did. Oh, you weren't there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So interesting study. Bro, I didn't know this. So first time in history ever, uh, that the U S obesity rate fell. Did so, you know that? Did you know this? I did not. So I didn't know this, it either. This is going now. There's speculation around it, and I I agree with the the speculation. So I'll, I'll make a bet as to why. But since we've been tracking obesity, it's only gone up. It's only gone up every single day. You yeah, know, yeah. every five years we track it or whatever. Four years we we see it going up, 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 up. And I thought I think the hope was that hopefully it flattens out at some point because we've reached peak obesity. Like we just can't. You know, get any worse. Uh, but although cram I cram any more in. Yeah, like okay, this is like the this is like the limit, and this is how far it can go. And so that was like the hope. Like, is it going to slow down? But it didn't slow down. It's been growing. It's been growing. Been growing, especially since we've been in the industry over the last you know two and a half decades. But for the first time ever, it's been observed that the obesity rate fell, and many experts are attributing this to the use of GLP ones. Wow. GLP-1 agonists. It's already making the impact. Something like one out of eight Americans are, uh, is, uh, are using these, if I'm not mistaken. I was just going to ask you if you know what the number is. I'm curious to like the total amount of people now that have probably used Maybe these. you can confirm that for me, Doug, but it's, it's, it's becoming... So the millions, though. Millions of people now have... If I'm not mistaken, it's, uh, we are implementing it and adopting it at ridiculously rapid rates uh, at the moment. And they believe this is why obesity is falling. For the first time ever, we have a... And I hate using this term because I am. Uh, I think this this is not accurate what I'm about to say because uh, it's way more complex than you know just using a GLP one. But this is as close as we've ever gotten to a silver bullet. Um, so twelve percent already. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So at some point, with around six percent currently taking one. Now I I so one in eight. Have, what, yeah, what, have, give me a, give me an idea on numbers on that. What that is? Like how many millions of people is that? Well, give, 12 twelve percent was a three hundred fifty million. Just give people. me some rough math. What is yeah, it? Yeah, it's three fifty three forty. Um, so twelve percent of that is what? So uh, it's like almost forty million people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I I predict. I believe you're going to see sixty to seventy percent of Americans on these at one point. That's how that's how pre prevalent they're going to be. That's crazy. You think that's, the growth is going to still? I mean, that to me oh is already God. an alarming. Of twelve percent. I remember. So I remember a time when. Do you remember like back in the days? Uh, Twenty four Fitness used to do this every year because uh, we were a part of the the popularity. Like there, in fact, we talk about this all the time that. Uh, we never even heard people call it the fitness industry yeah, before. It wasn't an industry. Yeah. It was like yeah, a, yeah. it was like a niche thing that yeah, people yeah. did. I feel like we and I remember that. when we used to share the stats on like how how many Americans would that are working out or using a gym, and the percentage was yep. was lower than that. 
So to think that we've reached a point where there is more people on GLP ones than when we first entered the space that are we're actually well, working out in the gym is fascinating. GLP ones have been used on. Uh, I've been diabetics. Uh, they've been prescribing them for for a while, but now what we're prescribing it for is for weight loss because the data is coming out. We're seeing like, oh, this is effective, and it is. There's like, there's no. We've never come close to any kind of a medical intervention, especially a non-surgical one that comes close to the weight loss effects uh, of these uh, of these peptides. Um, and uh, it's making an impact on the obesity rate. Now, there's some things underneath that that nobody's really talking about because here's what's going to happen. We're going to see this big drop. And I guarantee this is going to happen. I guarantee the government is going to mandate insurance companies cover it. You're going to start seeing these things being used in mass and it's a right. You need to have these because they're so effective. Obesity kills so many different people and, and all that stuff. But what we're ignoring is the silent epidemic that's underneath that, which is the the under muscled epidemic. And for people who are like, what are you talking about? If you look at the amount of people with diabetes and let's just look at cardiovascular disease and diabetes, forget all the others, because you can look at cancer and all that stuff, but just pick those two. It's true that a majority of people who develop diabetes or who who get, you know, coronary artery, artery disease or cardiovascular disease are obese. It's true that a majority of them, but there's a sizable minority. Some some estimates like 15%, 20% are never obese, and yet they still get those things. What's going on? They no don't muscle. have enough muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obese people also don't have enough muscle. I remember uh, a while ago there was a study that came out that, that – just blasted the myth that obese people carry more muscle mass. I believe they that. actually suffer I from believe sarcopenia that for a long time. Yeah. I, I just you just so did I. It makes logical sense that okay, this person who's they're carrying yeah, they're carrying this weight. If I had to carry, you know, an extra hundred pounds around all day, like I would get stronger. I would build more muscle to adapt. But it's it was fascinating to to see that research on it, that it's not true. No, that sarcopenia actually is actually more common because there's a strong connection, and I believe it's cause and effect. With poor muscle metabolism, I mean, this is a, a this is a tissue in the body that has a profound effect on your body's ability to utilize insulin and testosterone and estrogen and progesterone. That is a storage vessel for carbohydrates or glycogen that burns lots of calories. It's a very active tissue, but it's this organ that we can actively manipulate. Like I can't really do that to any other organ necessarily. But my muscle, I can make it way stronger, healthier, and build it. And so what, what I, my, my fear is that people are going to go on GLP-1s, not strength train, not address the muscle loss that comes yeah. from just eating less calories. And we're going to see, you know, maybe better than not, right? I think we're if still going to see- we're talking millions, like 40 million yeah. people right now, like think about that. Yeah. I guarantee like, oh, I mean, how many people do you actually think are doing this right? Let's just small, put it that way. Small percentage. Very, very small. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, but look at even from people I've talked to about Well, I mean, look at the example. I mean, this has probably been one of the most interesting or exciting parts about what we're doing with this group of, you know, 50 people that we have in the GLP-1. There's a very wide range of people that are using it, you know, and and uh, and the most common challenge that I see in the the group and the, the our experience has been the plateaus has been the inevitable plateaus that mm -hmm. will come. Like somebody gets on this GLP-1, they want to lose mm -hmm. 50 pounds or more, and uh, they see they see the immediate success from it because uh, it does absolutely crush the appetite and get rid of a lot of these crazy cravings and stuff like that, noise that people have around food, uh, which is incredible. It does that. But it, it, it literally is only just cutting calories and then they just lose this weight and then the body kind of plateaus and then it becomes, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And now the uh, medical field says, well, we'll just increase the dosage, yeah, increase dose. <laughs> you know, it. increase the dosage, keep them walking. Uh, keep but then that doesn't, that doesn't solve the, no. the other issue that Sal was bringing up, which is, you know, are, you know, are we, uh, you know, are we more riddled with obesity or are we more riddled with being under muscle? Well, it's both. If you, So first of all, if you just cut your calories, your body adapts by paring muscle down. This is why they, this is why they plateau. This is why we have people in our group who are eating 1100 <clears throat> calories. Mm -hmm. They lost an initial 25 pounds and they have another 25 to 30 to go and it stopped. Stop working. And, and they're like, active. What do I do? They're working out. They're moving. They're doing stuff. They're, they're trying to. And they're like, what do I do? Like, we got to reverse diet you. We got to reverse diet you, build some muscle. Your body has uh, plateaued. Here's what's going to happen if people don't do this right. They're going to lose muscle, lose mobility as a result, and you're going to see nutrient deficiencies go up yeah. as a result of, yeah. the, of the lower uh, caloric intake, all of which can cause more of their own problems. 
So if you if you use them right, and I think that so if we look at another medical intervention that was like culture shifting, and it was culture shifting, antibiotics, right? Antibiotics got invented, and man, it solved a lot of problems. But what did we do? We went crazy with yeah, them. Yeah, threw it at everything. We did over. You got a cold? Here's some antibiotics. When I was a kid, when we were kids, everybody's gut suffered. When we were old. kids in the '80s, okay. You know how easy it was to get antibiotic? Yeah. You know how many times I was Almost every mom just had a like jar vitamins. of it in the, inside yeah. the house. You, you go to the, anytime you're sick, they didn't say, was it a virus? There's, hey, let's take some no, amoxicillin. <laughs> now we're developing these like super bugs that, uh, that, that could, you know, threaten to wipe us out. And, uh, there's a lot of, you know, dysbiosis and, and autoimmune issues that might be a result of this overuse of antibiotics. We feed it to animals like crazy. I think we got to be very careful, but I think if you use them right, there's going to be some crazy, uh, Put some crazy potential benefits, but you got to use them right. That's the thing that we can. Well, to- uh, you know, switching to the positive stuff that I see in this group, the thing that I think, and this was, you know, my experience too. So it's really interesting to hear that this is kind of the consensus. Is the anybody who, and this is where I think the most value of these things are, like anybody who's been challenged with food before, and they they're self aware enough to know that they have like a like a relationship issue with, with types of foods or things, right. Or medicating with food, like where it's just like, man, you know, Adam, I know I fuck up. I know that, you know, some nights I'll go downstairs and I'll just eat like 1500 calories worth of ice cream or this stuff. And yeah. I know I'm not. It's an ingrained that, behavior. Yeah. Right. And they, and they, they're, they're aware, but then they have such a hard time yeah. of, of breaking that. The part that everybody has said that has gone through it is just like, it just, gets rid of that completely just you do not have that and that was my experience i thought well this is really weird like i don't even have a pool for that food even when i continued to lower the dose i was like this is a trip even on very low doses i still don't and and that was what so this is the part that i think we're going to really evolve in this space and the and the doctors and stuff are going to come along hopefully eventually which is getting that uh, benefits uh, with these lower doses, but then still having enough of an appetite so I can reverse diet and go the other direction. Because it's really tough to ask a client to reverse diet when you take something that completely crushes the appetite and they don't want to eat more than a thousand yeah. calories. But yet then they're seeing these huge benefits from them not binging if, and doing other if stuff. If you use it with uh, behavior modification practices, strength training, high protein diet, mm-hmm. I think you have for for the first time ever a real like like a like a large majority chance of really having long term success but it has to be because if you stop uh um if you stop in this behavior this hard behavior this like uh, I always eat this way I always eat this way and you stop it because you have this this peptide that now has reduced the craving dramatically you've weakened those neural pathways then you supplement it with or you replace it with a different behavior and you do this for an extended period of time, you strength train so you don't lose muscle, eat a high protein diet, then you go off, you're in a good position. You're in a good position to not go back yeah. to where you were before because you broke uh, the habit. Um, but by the way, I do want to say this. Um, I think if you're going to do this, I think going through a compound pharmacy is better because- You can adjust. You have more flexibility on the yeah, dose. Yeah. What we're finding uh, yeah. just in the group that we're working with is there's a wide variety of how people- this person over here takes this much and it made them nauseous and sick to the stomach. So they have to reduce the dose. This person over here had to take three times as much to get whatever yeah. effect. Yep. So, But when you go through your doctor and you get these name Generic brand prescriptions, doses. it's like, nope, you're starting with this Same dose. dose yeah. In fact, the, the pens that they come in click and that's the dose. There is mm. no way to lower it. Yeah, yeah. Compound pharmacy allows you to take micro doses and adjust according to how, um, you know, how your body feels. By the way, I, there's, a, there's a study that just came out that shows that Semaglutide, which is, uh, you know, that's the brand name Ozempic, was associated with reduced opioid use in patients. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. Now, the crazy part about that is the amount of people that we have addicted to opioids. It's- it, 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 it may... It may just, in fact, work with the part of the brain that causes us to have cravings with almost anything. Yeah, yeah. in some cases, you get well, lots of reports of people drinking less alcohol. That's what it's. I mean, obviously, it's pointing to that, right? Yeah. It's like you. It's easy because everyone's doing it for weight loss, or to be obvious about. Oh my god, now I don't eat the ice cream. Yeah. But it, people are connecting it to biting nails, or connecting yeah. it to smoking, they're connecting it to drinking, yep. they're connecting mm-hmm. it to now uh, opioids. I, it's wild how many things else are being impacted by this. Now I wonder though, with a study like that, Sal, because that's a that's a there's a there's a lot of money in that 
that side. So like, there's a lot of, you know, is, does it make pharma enough money yep. on the Ozempic side to counter the other side? You get an obesity, an <laughs> obesity intervention that works. You have the most, you're the richest pharma company. Like there's nothing yeah. that will come close yeah. to that, uh, to that at all. But you're right. Like how many other medications will it potentially replace? I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But yeah, if, if, but so we work with people that use a compound pharmacy. For people who are interested, it's mphormones.com. And then they can kind of, you know, adjust your dose. But I find this interesting. I'm looking at the studies on autoimmune issues and other addictive type behaviors. Because this this is weird. This Did is you wild. see the, was it the statistics? I think it was for American children. Uh, and they were talking about like what they found in their urine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Freaking 80% of Roundup. 80% of them have glyphosates in their urine. Yeah, you should look at the you should look at the studies on pregnant, in microplastics on, pre, on pregnant women and breast milk and how much of it has glyphosates in it. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's alarming, dude. I mean, it's just crazy to me that that many kids, like you know, it's like it's just already in their blood. And do you think it's do you think it is they are getting it from because it's in everything, or is it getting passed down from the mother? Is he, is it? Oh, it's in. I mean, it's in rainwater. Um, or it's just water from the rain. It's in anything that's non-GMO. Um, I mean, and it's, I don't know how many millions. I remember millions when of I remember when you had the conversation with Doctor Bush years years ago. Yeah, and he talked mm -hmm. about like even organic stuff. It doesn't yeah. matter because it's in the rain and it gets. You'll in have the soil. less of it. Yeah, so you get less of it, but you're still getting it. The only way to know for sure is they have these kind of third party uh, companies that will test foods and say um, glyphosate residue free. And then you can see like, okay, this is so, but, but you can dramatically reduce it. So they've done studies on people who eat organic. So they'll take people who eat like a conventional diet and they'll switch to organic. Then they'll test their urine 60 days later. And you say, you see a substan substantial decrease in all the synthetic pesticides and, and, and glyphosates. So you could definitely do that. You know, it's so tough to, to balance the two conversations that we're having right now. I know. Because... <laughs> We're talking to the masses on obesity and, and solving that issue and getting the root cause of that. And it's like you got people that are binging candy and ice cream and, and all these bad habits. And it's just like- You got this priority list. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm getting yeah, at right yeah, now. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to lose people of like, you know- Don't switch to organic potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to solve all your problems. But I, I think that's what happens is I uh, think that you get somebody who bears. already has all this um, emotion and stuff that's wrapped up with uh, medicating with food and then they start to decide they're going to make these changes and then they start going down the rabbit hole and they're like, oh my God, I can't have this and yeah. I'm getting poisoned by that yeah. and the the metals in this and the toxins in that and the microplastics in this and it's yeah. just like, fuck, this is too yeah. much. It was just easier to be yeah. fat. I'm just going to go that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So I feel like that's what happens. I never want to lose the audience with that of understanding like where the big rocks are first and and first getting yourself in a a, a healthy weight, right? Where you're not constantly stressing the body all day uh, to operate, right? Like once we get to a place where we're in a manageable way, then we can start to layer on like the priorities and, and trying to get better and improve with the decisions that you make around the quality of the food that you're getting. But there's definitely levels to this and I don't ever want to lose the beginner, you know, we started off talking about the exercises for beginners it's, to... It, it is wild, though, because you're seeing a lot more news around um, food dye and, you know, yeah, additives Forever and chemicals. Yeah, more, yeah, you're seeing a lot more stuff on that just because I think there's more awareness. There was... I forgot what it was. She spoke at Congress. Food Babe. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with her or not, uh, she went viral. So she went down and spoke to Congress when Max did. Yeah. So Max Lugovi was here. And they, so did Jillian Michaels right around him. Yeah. I don't know. If Which, by the way, I was really impressed with her talk, by the way. she's. Did she, you see Jillian? Yeah, she I was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she I, did really good. Yeah, I know, I know, you know, the fitness space, <laughs> we've railed on her quite a bit. In because the last, of the biggest loser. Well, yeah, 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 you know, but. No, I like but I, But I don't know if you said now. Her, her, her days, I'm all about. Her, yeah. yeah, her talk was really good. Yeah. I was actually really impressed. So what this, this woman did is she posted, like, the same product in, in Europe or UK versus uh -huh. here. So, like, here's Fruit Loops here. Here's Fruit Loops there. Here's Cheetos here. And it's crazy how different. Uh, our products are in terms of the ingredients, like all the dyes and synthetic things that are banned in Europe that we have over here. And yeah. now Cal I just, I brought this up recently, California banned uh, some of these food dyes because of their connection to ADHD in children. Yeah. So, well, we, I mean, we mentioned this, I think one of the last episodes we talked about this and, I'm, and I asked you guys if you thought it was, you know, cause I feel like it's insidious. I feel yeah. like this is like, because if you're already creating it for the UK, like why not just, 
make it in bulk and you know that's the direction everyone's going unless there's hidden motives behind why you're doing because you know that a lot of those things make it more addictive and so you're more like hey let's we're going to run this way as long as we can until we can't anymore because we know that sales wise it'll drop it will drop yeah. and so even though we know that uk already went this direction eventually other countries will too we're not going to completely shift the company in that direction and I definitely don't think it's like, oh, this huge expensive thing. I think it's more that they know that a lot of those chemicals and a lot of those colorings yeah. and stuff like that play more into the addictive properties of it. And they're like, fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna ride this thing till the wheels fall off. Yeah, I think it's interesting because like, yeah, that um why they went and, and sort of presented this to to Congress. I think it's 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 an impactful moment. I think this needs to be addressed, and I think that it this should be a non- partisan thing like everybody should get on board with it's, it just sucks that it has to be like through you know one side of the fence and then it's, it's RFK. rfk yeah rfk has really brought a lot of light to some of the stuff that was considered conspiracy or whatever and he comes out with data yeah and he makes a very compelling argument for mm -hmm. a lot of the things that he says and it's starting to bring things to the surface so. yeah i mean people just need to get on board and, and look this up and research it it's yeah. it's it's real and it's impactful even too like i was i brought this up a long time ago is like they call it like the teflon flu and, and like we've we've known that like you know teflon is something non-stick the non-stick yeah. you don't want to get you know you don't want to wash it a certain way to get that uh so you get it on your food and like scratch it or whatever but apparently like yeah if 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 it does end up uh because of the age of it now, like some of them are kind of older. And so it's, it's like flaking off in some people's food oh. and they're getting all these like autoimmune issues and oh, all these like, you man. know, the sickness it's, and this is like, like flu, like symptoms they're getting from their Teflon pants. Dude, like, I didn't even know what like an iron skillet was until I got into my like late twenties, dude. Like my mom never cooked on like an iron skillet, <sighs> which is so wild to me. Cause I cook everything on that. Now, now I do. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 and I think it's easier to clean. I think it's like everything about it is, you like, know, it's that like, why did, why did we go the other way? Like, I, because I bro, know. cleaning iron skillets like there's a skill to it. It's oh, like, I think it's, it's easy. Oh, I think it's easier. Do you think it's easier or hard? I think it's, yeah, oh, it's iron chain mail. Yeah, that, that's. Is, but you got to do that. Remember Tef Remember the nonstick? You just and it's like clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know? No, I don't know. I've always thought. Oh, yes. I, that's why I thought it was interesting because I was like, man, this uh, iron skillet's easy, man. I feel like it's easier to. You know, iron skillets are good for women to use, uh, menstruating women, because they'll actually get a little bit of iron yeah. uh, in yeah. their food from it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, we all do, don't we? A little bit. Yeah. That's what's well, happening. Well, men, we got to be careful. Too much iron is not good. That's why it's good to give blood every once in a while because we, we don't menstruate. Yeah, we also don't uh, cook tomatoes in your oh, the acidic, anything with the acids. Why? Because it makes more yeah, iron? Yeah, it leaches out the iron. Oh. So if you get tomatoes. too much iron, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Give what else, what else is like that, Doug? What else should I not cook in the iron skillet? The tomatoes? Anything else? That's yeah, anything that's high in acids. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things that would be classified as that. But tomatoes are the first thing to come to mind. Oh, that's, mm. that's good to know. Don't, don't cook any lemons. I don't think I've yet. ever cooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. But don't that's cook any Legos. You know. What? <laughs> What'd you say? Why? It's Why? just the plastic. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I was speaking of kids and stuff, my, my, my little girl was hanging out with her all day the other day. And uh, this, you know, when you play with little kids, you, you let them do certain things. And we just gave her a bunch of stickers. And she thought it would be cool to just cover my legs in stickers, which, mm -hmm. you know, I have hairy legs. Yeah. <laughs> so she's just one after another after another. I'm like, this is going to suck. Yeah. 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 This is really – Aftermath. Did, bro, it sucked later. Are you I'm patchy like, now or what? Oh, uh, no. It was just – but later on, you know, she goes to bed and I'm like – I looked at my wife. I'm like, honey, I got to take all these stickers off. I start cute. peeling them off with my legs. But she's funny. I, she starts saying, I love you. Um, she's now saying that. And so I was trying to record her. Saying I love you, Papa. So I'm like, I'm like, Dahlia, say I love you, Papa. And she looks at me. And she goes, I love you, Mama. I'm like, no, no, no. I love you, Papa. And she goes, no, I love you, Mama. And I'm like, oh, what is happening here? Come on, say you love me. She's rebelling. Yeah, no, she loves Mom. She doesn't love me yet. Well, you were you were home with the kids. I mean, you were off at uh, you know mosh pitting. I was. Oh, bro, that was Alabama. Uh, I love, bro, the glasses. Hey, the glasses are you, sick. You watch his videos, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's he's going through. If you watch his videos on Instagram, you, if people listen, you got to check it out. I could see people literally seeing Justin coming, coming towards them. Yeah. And going uh oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it was i mean it i look at it like this dude like one one time a year like i i have like a propensity for violence you know and it's like i just need to get it out and then i'm like super chill like i'm just like a very easy going you know cool guy to be around fine but like i you know it's in there like i gotta get it out so this is my outlet where it's like <laughs> productive it's safe there's rules you know like it, really it's about I, I i actually i'm drawn to violence as long as there's rules 
Yeah, like yeah. It, that's fine. Gentlemanly violence. Gentlemanly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Respectful, honor. You'd be honor, if this was two hundred years ago, you'd be doing a duel. I mean, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, that's exactly. the part I find so interesting to me because, uh, and obviously, you've explained this multiple times on the show, like yeah. that there's there is like boundaries and rules. I just don't. It doesn't make sense to me. Like going to a thing like that. I get the energy, the rage of getting it all up, but then I feel like it would be really hard for me to rein in the like not want to get into a fight. Like somebody yeah. just does it the wrong way a little bit or throws a little English on it. Like, you know, that's size the only time people get hurt is when, yeah, the people that are, are unaware. There's guys who are trying to retaliate, right? Or, you know, they take offense. And did you knock anyone out of their shoes again? You did that last time. Uh, well, okay. So I guess there was one little bit of a retaliation where this guy was. So I was just like watching the concert and I was doing my own thing uh and this guy decided he wanted to open the pit up and decided to like go full sprint like through people and then he ended up like on my side so he like ran and bulldozed and tried to bulldoze into me and then stopped and then and i was like Oof! like i it hurt my back and i was just like you know kind of stand i look at the guy and i'll and I, and then he took off like in <laughs> so then you i was like <laughs> this you know like i i was like I memorized his face and his body and <laughs> what he like, looked like. I will and, see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Record. <laughs> yeah. And then I went right in the pit. And thankfully I, I, I found him, um, you know, the second song and, and uh, got to, you know, retaliate a little bit, leveled him a bit. But See, that's uh, what I feel, wait, I feel like. I feel like that's what would happen. And then it just would escalate. And there's yeah. you, not a lot of fights, huh? No, but like it, it, you know, it's like it got out, and then I, you know, I even like picked him up, and you know, then we were over it. Wait, but you knocked him up down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he a grown man? He's a grown man. <laughs> he he started it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I want to hear now that when you said somebody came up behind. So this is like a metal concert. You said someone came up behind you was ro ro oh, rubbing, rubbing your shoulder. Yeah. Like, okay. So what? this was like. What an extreme experience, I know, right? One minute I'm about to brawl with some dude, and I says, "Next minute I'm getting a shoulder rub dude, from a stranger." Kind of weird, it, it, bro. It, it's the it's really hard for Your me. Weekends to, are like, weirder than mine. Take you guys into this like uh, culture. It's like a subculture of like, uh, like it's it's so unique uh, because people are like they they say this is like this is angry music for happy people is what they like to mm. say, right? So it's like. <laughs> It, it's a bit of a, a, a weird thing. It like helps us like psychologically somehow. So there's a lot of fucked up people there. Like, let's just be honest. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm one of them, you know, yeah. like I, I have demons. I have things like I, I, you know, I, I work through, but um, there it's like you get, it's so eclectic because like I thought initially like, there's a lot more people like me like to lift weights, like to get into like the heavy music. Like this is like kind of PR stuff. Like I, I, I like get out a little bit of like anger and this, some people are just like, you know, they're, they're more emotional. And so, you know, it's like, this is like a, like a, like a wild explosive expression. And so they do like these ninja kicking, punching, like crazy moves, like in place. Um, <laughs> There's there's people that love to stage dive. They go up and they just they have this weird like adrenaline rush just from jumping out and hoping for the best, you know. <laughs> and dude, can I tell you how many people I saw eat absolute shit? Like because they just they stage dive uh, nobody and nobody caught like this poor lady <laughs> just <laughs> yay Koosh, gets down and and we all just kind of stopped because it was I was just far enough to like oh no you know you have like this oh this is not gonna go well. And she gets up and she, you could just tell she really like hurt herself. That was a chick? I went to go, yeah. And I'm like, oh, and she just starts walking off, like, <laughs> like tries not to like emote at all. Yeah. It's trying to like keep it, 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 but dude, that had to hurt real bad. Like she landed like straight on like concrete. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> and it was like, but she loved it. And then I see somebody else, even at the airport, this, uh, before I left, like this guy, like, he had like a bandage over his eye. I'm like, Oh my God, this guy like did something crazy to his eye. Like, like he might've lost his eye at this freaking <laughs> festival. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> like it's so it, yeah, it's, it gets it wild, dude. Yeah, we're not coming. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I want to hear about the shoulder rub. Oh yeah. The shoulder rub. So <laughs> yeah. anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if this guy was a fan. I don't know if this guy was on some Molly or, or <laughs> which, which, I yeah. don't know if at this a, guy at a metal concert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why you would choose that. Like go, <laughs> go to rave or something, yeah. but so I'm there with my 
three other friends and, and um, they're all kind of to the side and in front. And so I'm watching the show and uh, this guy like f- behind me starts like, like playing the drum beats like on your back. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before you realize what's happening, <laughs> because I thought I was one of my friends, dude. I'm like, That's still kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You guys do that to me. I mean, get off my back, bro. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Dude, we're, we're physical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so just, how long was he playing the drums on your back for? For uh, a good like. I don't know, 10 seconds. It's like just, it's too long. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's really long. But yeah. The, the, the bass ones doing, that were like low, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> One, <laughs> boop, 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 <laughs> two, <laughs> three, you know, like <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> A little blast beat whoa, in there. Whoa, whoa, a little uh, low there, guy. Yeah. So I turn around and and the guy's <laughs> looking at me. And he's got this big smile on his face. He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, great man, right? <laughs> and I was just like, uh, yeah, yeah. I love, I love this song. And I just kind of like turn over and then he's just like all trying to like hang out. And, and, and my friends are looking at me like, Oh, well. yeah. and <laughs> I'm like, do I don't know what just happened, but <laughs> he was like trying to kind of like, I don't know if he was hitting on me. I don't know what I'm still confused about the whole thing. So if he was a fan, like you, you gotta like make eye contact let first it, let, and like let say you know. hi, yeah. like, you know, Cause like I was really creeped out by that one. That one was one of them. And then another one, this guy comes up and he like, just doesn't say anything. And he grabs my shoulder and he's just like, he's like, you got some boulder shoulders. Man. What is happening? What is <laughs> happening? <laughs> what is he's, he's concerts, dude. I don't I know. know. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of like real muscular dudes. I mean, there's a lot of big guys, but they're all kind of like mushy and you know, like, a lot of these guys are, are like keyboard warriors or something. Did you uh, did you yeah. did you go shirtless at all anytime? No, I had um, a tank top on. The, oh, okay. the, like, so you were showing the midriff, you were showing the midriff, the, 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 the belly button right shirt. Is, you were Just showing so, the, you yeah. were showing the guns then. So. I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that was like on me, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you, you were asking for it. Yeah, okay, I was yeah. asking for it. <laughs> I was, I was showing off. What do you think is going to happen when you expose them pipes? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, touch first, then say something. Like, I just, uh, like, it's not registering to me. I don't do that. To, you yeah. know, like, it's, it's hey, like. you. Every time you've gone before, now you run into listeners, you run into, that actually said that I'm a listener. They didn't just rub your shoulder or do anything weird, right? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. Uh, it was after one of the, the, the second days I was there. And uh, yeah, this guy, like, we were, the concert had ended, and then he kind of looks up, and he was like, Dude, mind pump, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I saw people taking pictures of you and circling your face in the crowd and stuff like yeah. that. That recognized, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. yeah. So that's yeah, good for you. It was cool. It was, it was really fun, dude. It's it's totally yeah. like a, a, a nostalgic throwback thing, and like everybody that's there gets it, obviously, because you don't want to be there unless you really know what's going on. Like you're gonna be like, dude, this is awful. Get me the hell out of here, right? Yeah. Like so for me, it was like Disneyland. You always come back very chill. Yeah, nice yeah. and zen and just chill. Got it all just out. Right. So nice, just right. Just right, dude. That's because nice. he lets it all build up for an entire year, <laughs> a, and then it comes out. Right. For like a day, he's yeah. cool. Yeah. He's back dude. to Justin. Mm. It's Come therapy, on. dude. It's therapy. That's awesome. Doug, you were in Seattle? Where were you at? No, I went to Arizona. Oh, Arizona. Yeah. Oh, you went and saw your girl? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought, for some reason, I thought you were up in Seattle this trip. What did you guys do? Uh, so it was parents' weekend at the university. Already? So, yeah. Uh, well, it's been a, a month and a half. God, it's already been a month and a half. Yeah. So we went down there, and uh, she joined a sorority. So we went to a gala for that, oh. and then we went to the uh, ASU. Uh, was it Kansas game? I can't remember who they played, yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was hot, very hot. Oh yeah, I bet it was even crazier where you were at. Oh yeah, you over a hundred for sure. Yeah. So at five o'clock, we went to the game, and it was one hundred and three. Oh my god! Yeah. Mm. So, oh, that's it's hot. The desert. Oh, that's, that's hot. A good time. So, what do you think of that? What, do you like uh, the sorority? Do you like the campus? Well, I didn't go to like- the sorority. They had the event at a restaurant, but the campus is great. Actually, ASU is the largest uh, public university in, in the, the United country, States. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Like seventy thousand mm. students there. Wow. So they have campuses it's downtown. City. They have campuses in Tempe. I think they have te- uh, campuses elsewhere as well, um, and they're growing it. Very actively. I like yeah. Phoenix, Scottsdale area. I like it over there. You know, Phoenix is a great city. Yeah. I love it. And yeah. Scottsdale as well, of yeah. course. 
Uh, lots of good restaurants and um, very clean, actually. Now, At least the you, areas I was in. Did you keep it close to the chest or did you tell her you've been crying yourself to sleep every night? I, well, I had to let her know. <laughs> it's been hard on me. Actually, leaving her this time was harder than the first time. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. yeah. Even because- though I'm going to see her this weekend. But, you think it's just because seeing her again and yeah. like maybe the the like the adult in her now doing her own thing, it, kind of that. Yeah, yeah. she has her own life. Yeah, she's yeah. and some of the life I'm not so excited about, you know. <laughs> but she's an adult, so she can choose what to do. Yeah. But I think also last time I was there, we were moving her in, and we were so busy. We we're just you know shopping, going to Costco, yeah. Target, all these different places, and uh, really didn't have a chance to let it sink in. But the, this time was harder for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was a good time. Great, great weekend. What is, um, Sal, you probably know studies on this. Like, uh, there is, there's something about the age of like 18 to 25 ish or something like that where kids just kind of like, I think we all probably did this, right? Like, did you guys, like, you hit that eight, you, you're now old enough, you're an adult, make your own decisions. And then all of a sudden you like, even if you have a good relationship with your, your parents, you still kind of like branch off, want to do your thing. And it seems to be like around 30. When you kind of come back, where well, you the, realize the, like the, all the things they made you do that was so strict, or the stuff you were so angry yeah. about, like you've well, kind the of- brain isn't matured fully uh, until you're 25, right around 25. So the frontal lobe, the, the executive functioning part of the brain, is still underdeveloped in in adult, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, 22 year old. So you have all the responsibility and freedom of an adult, but you still have a kid's mind and this is why you look back at some of the dumb stuff that you've done or crazy things yeah, yeah. it's right in that age group right in that age group you know you do that stuff and then you hit 25 start to get late 20s 30s you start to change a little bit that's there's a, you know there's arguments for changing the legal age for lots of things to 20 to 25 because of that yeah because mm-hmm. you're just like a kid Huh. Yep. I always wonder if that would be the answer or the like how the the opposite where there's like no age limit where it's just like you let the parents parent and then you and there's less of a big deal around like do you think if we went like some countries where there's like no drinking age and stuff like that that you, anybody can do it's not a big deal or do you think raising the restriction and pushing oh, it the out col- they both the culture plays a big role like like that's there's less I, binge mm-hmm. drinking in Europe because uh, wine is accepted. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a big all, deal. Mm-hmm. Parents kids, let you have it when you're a kid at dinner, yeah. and it's like this isn't a, where I remember as a kid. Like it was such a big deal, like yeah. oh to get to get it because you're not supposed to do it. Yeah. Whereas maybe if we could, I mean, I, I watched that play out. So we had a one of my best friends in school. Uh, he had parents. He was like a he was a four point two GPA kid, athlete, just good good kid, and his parents were the parents that we were allowed to drink at their house. The rule was just you, we get the key, they get the yeah. keys, you can't leave but they would let us drink whatever we wanted and party and stuff of like that. And we never did. And he never did. He never cared to like, it was just like, because it was the taboo he, wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. It was mm-hmm. just like, he was not, nah, I don't really it feel like the it. Air out of yeah. It. And, yeah. I remember, and now I remember all, all of us who had really strict parents were just like, always come on, Kenny, let's throw a party this weekend. He yeah. Like, nah, I, don't, I got a, I got a midterm coming up and I don't, you know, it was like, come oh. on, dude. So he was like that. And I, you know, I always attribute that probably because his parents, didn't make it to be that big of a deal. And so it wasn't that big of a deal for him to pass on it all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. interesting. I'm going to ask you about your, your, your injury. We haven't talked uh, for a little while. Mm-hmm. How's your injury doing? What are you doing to, to work Any on progress? It? Yes. Stability wise. Your body's changing r- r- rapidly, very, very rapidly. Uh, it's, it's, it's visible. But so I'm I, interested in, in your, in your pec injury. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a pain in the ass. Just being honest. Um, and, and very frustrating, uh, to, uh, you know, I have days where I feel like I'm making really good progress and I have other days where I feel like a setback. Really what I, what I feel now, um, is, is actually getting to the, all the, the, you know, the ability to articulate my scapula through its full range, you know, uh, that's right now the most challenging thing. And I think it's fine because I don't, I don't feel where I'm that limited as much, but I know that it's what causes the shoulder yeah. pain to come, come, come back, you know, here and there. Uh, the, the pec still is, uh, it what now what I feel like I'm dealing with is a lot of scar tissue. Mm. So, um, and you know, it's interesting going through this right now with Katrina too, looking back, uh, so I haven't been like this, like uh, committed to tracking and, and mm-hmm. dial, not since I was like competing, not like at this level where I'm like committed, committed, right? And one of the things that I, I'm looking back and, and probably didn't realize and didn't give enough credit to her and the role that she played in the success of that journey of becoming a, a pro men's physique guy. And that was the 
uh, at that time in our relationship, we didn't have a son and uh, she was massaging me like every night. And, you know, like, I guess when you get it like every single night, you don't think of a big deal. Like it's that big of a deal until you don't. And I, I see now like how much that accelerates the recovery oh, yeah. on so much of what I'm doing. And so she's been now getting the hot stones out and breaking that scar tissue up. And the first like two times it felt like it didn't do anything. It just, it felt good while she was doing it. But it was like, it felt so weird. Like when she would, would rub on it, I could like feel this ball of tissue moving around. Oh. It just felt weird, felt really weird and uncomfortable, but it's still kind of like, okay, we got to go through this. Then about the third session. Um, and she, she felt it. She's just like, Oh, I feel like it's, it's dissipating right a little bit. Like, and she started to break it up and then I would feel the instant mm -hmm. kind of, relief and movement and so it's it's gone way down there's still a little bit there uh and I, I feel that getting better i'm still really timid to directly load and hit the chest hard what you what i'm doing now and i've been sharing this on the whole series is uh trigger sessions with bands mm -hmm. uh occasional mm -hmm. isometric stuff with the cables uh for the like flies and then like yesterday we filmed and um, I'm, I switched the program to, uh, I moved from a kind of MAPS 15 protocol to a upper lower split now. And when I went to the upper split, uh, I'm now, I did like a, um, instead of doing like a military shoulder press, I did like it somewhere between like, like a real a, high incline. Yes. And I did that for like 10 sets. And I was explaining to the audience that what I was doing was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, four sets of this is contributing to the shoulders, four sets of this is contributing to like, and so like the volume that would have went to the chest that I'm not going to do, I'm going to add in in the the, the shoulder area. And I know that I'm recruiting some of the, the upper pec in that movement. So I'm not, comp I'm, I'm trying to do things to not allow the chest to atrophy anymore. So that's hence the trigger sessions, hence doing shoulder movements that I know incorporate the chest a little bit. And so I'm kind of doing that now, still staying away from- Now are you using the peptide still? Are you doing red light therapy? Are you doing cold therapy? Are you mm -hmm. doing- So I just actually stopped. Uh, and the only reason why I stopped the peptides is because I ran out. So I need more. I need more of the BPC-157 or whatever the new yeah, yeah. the new and formulation. The yeah, the, it was a pentadeca, yeah. but it's yeah. BPC-5. Yeah, so I, I, I'm actually, the only reason why I stopped was because I'm out. I'm out of that and so I, i'm waiting for for that to, to come in i am doing the ju the juve like really which is interesting because i've always used the juve for psoriasis and skin stuff for me uh this for the recovery thing and i think what really made me do it was i actually wasn't doing it for the injury at first but i was doing it because i was overreaching on like training and mm -hmm. i and i realized like oh wow i noticed a difference like how much faster i recovered from that and so i've been pretty consistent with making sure I'm doing that twice a day for like 10, 15 minute sessions. Oh, wow. Uh, and with, you're putting it on the Oh, injury? real close. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So I just sit and sit in front of the the, the juve light and, and let it hit there. You know, it's so it's it's one of those things that it's like, uh, it's so hard to measure and tell, but I know that it works because I can see, I've seen it work in different things. And I'm like, okay, I just need to be consistent with doing that. The studies yeah. on red light mm -hmm. therapy and inflammation healing are pretty conclusive. Yeah. It definitely helps yeah. for sure. It's very, very. Cool. It's just a weird thing because it's not, uh, you know, it's 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 working on like a cellular level, yeah. so it's not like you're you're, you're not you're, moving, you're not exercising it, you're just yeah. sitting there, yeah, with this, with this light. Which on is you. probably why a lot of people feel like weird about it, or oh, is this no, really? There's tons of data on it. Yeah, yeah, tons of data on it. Speaking of skin, by the way, we're, we're we we're supposed to talk about Eterna. Um, they have this skincare product. So this is from Dr. Khan and his team, mm -hmm. and this is a skincare product that has stem cells. So this is one of the only things you can get on the market with actual stem cells. Like once wow. you make the, once you mix it up, you have to refrigerate it to keep those stem cells uh, alive essentially. Um, and then you have to use it within 30 days. You've been using it, Katrina swears by it. Well, that's how I, so the way I started using it was I actually made a comment to her um, cause I know she's tried all like all the different stuff that we've had. And I had just made a comment to her a few weeks a few weeks back, and I'm like, "Hey, what are you? What's up with your skin? I noticed your your face looks really good with so that." And then she told me that she's like, "Oh," and then she started putting it on me. So I wasn't using it at first. I didn't, of mm -hmm. course, with all the stuff that we get sometimes. It's just like it's hard to be consistent with everything we have. And uh, but I, she was like, she adopted it right away, and she's like, "No, that's." She's like, "I've been using it every night." So then she started putting it on my face. I really like the way it feels afterwards. So I'll do it after a shower at night. 
and just the way it feels like it hydrates yeah, yeah, yeah. my skin. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it feels. So it's got stem cells and growth factors in there to promote the growth of those stem cells, which then go to where they're supposed to, uh, to, to create that rejuvenating uh, process. I mean, stem cells are legit. They, they really do work. But uh, until now, I don't think of there's any topical product. Yeah, I've never heard of anything. They use nanotechnology too. To, it, it gets through the skin. So it doesn't just sit on the skin. <clears throat> A lot of products, you'll just put them on and it just sits on top of the skin. This actually gets into... Hmm. The skin and the deeper layers and, and and delivers the stem cells. So if it's doing that, is uh, I'm assuming then that's probably the best time for me to take it is after like a hot shower, yep. then, right? Probably yeah, opens yeah, up the pores oh, yeah, that yeah. gets in. So. And then they have one for the scalp. They have one for the scalp that helps uh, with because you can use stem scale stem cells to help regrow hair. People have been using that for a long time, oh, but right. it typically involves injections and all that stuff. Uh, they have one for the scalp that uses the same nanotechnology. Gets the I mean they they broke it down for us. I'm like oh this is remarkable. I wish I cared enough about that. I don't yeah. really give a shit. You yeah. Know, that's, yeah. That's everyone always asks me that we have so many products that like, imagine that paired with the juve, like I'm sure. Oh yeah. Be I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, it's probably amazing, but cause, I'm, cause what he, what I would do is I would, you put it on, wait for it to get in and whatever, then use the juve cause the red light, I yeah, wonder if it's because I never really liked my hair in the first place. Yeah, th really? I have so many yeah. friends that are trying to hold <laughs> on, dude. Maybe that's why I don't give a fuck. Yeah, wait, wait, yeah no, I have I have like, a lot of friends that are like that's they message me all the time. Hold like, on, you yeah. never liked your hair? Yeah, I never really liked my never? hair. Never? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it was like uh like kind of nappy and curly. It was a wavy. Really curly hair? Same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, when you met me, it was starting to thin. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't I don't yeah, I don't, I don't So as a young kid, it was very, very thick and curly and I had a calic and it was just hard to do anything with is, it. Is that That's why you, I'm so I'm Did you have Justin Timberlake hair? Did you is that what it was? Where you did the you did the tips? <laughs> he's got, he's like, got great look hair. Look like ramen. He's got great hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm so into my son's hair because he has different hair than me. Like I was like, How's I, his he, hair? I'm trying to think. It just it lays any way I I can uh, do yeah. any style, which I couldn't do that as a kid. Yeah. There would be trendy styles with hair, and I'd always go tell my, you know, yeah. barber or whatever to cut it, and then mine would look fucked up. Just didn't look good. Just, just because I didn't. I ended up using that Murray's, like it's like, uh, you know, like wax, the paste yeah, stuff, yeah. <laughs> just to get it to move the way I wanted. You know, yeah, it was I used annoying. To use, it was called glue. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah. yellow bottle. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was I called had that. glue. I had that, and, and it and it was wind tunnel tested. That's what it said on the bottle. <laughs> yeah, and I put oh, it my in my shit hair. Didn't move, dude. Oh, bro, it was, was a helmet. Home. If I fell, that, yeah. there was a period of time when young boys were doing that kind of gel on their hair. That that was the test of like what is the strongest. Oh, you wanted something yeah. that like, like I, I had buddies that would be like, yeah, I did this yesterday. I yeah, slept, yeah, yeah. I slept, and it, this is what it looks yeah. like. You know, say so like, like whoa, Hedstrom, bro, that's right, give me yeah. some of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to have so much hair that when I'd wake up in the morning and I'd walk, I'd feel it like move, like whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why I still have hair. I've lost a lot of hair. But the reason why I still have hair is I had so much. So I had a nice, it was like a reverse diet. Like it's the only reason way. why, it's the only thing that I think why I don't care. Like I just, because yeah. I have a lot of buddies, obviously now that we're in our, you know, mid forties that, you know, reach out and they're like, Hey, you know, I heard you talking about the Jew thing. And I heard you talk about this thing. It's like, dude, what works with that? I'm like, you know, honestly, like it's got all kinds of research, but I don't do it consistently for that. I just don't care. You like, do it for psoriasis and for. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff I care about. Yeah. yeah I definitely care about yeah. all that. Like re recovery, psoriasis, skin, skin stuff. Yeah. I think that stuff maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe I had more insecurities around the skin and and that stuff, and so that drives me yeah. to want to do that more. Where the hair, I used to shave my head when I had good hair. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm just like whatever about it. If you're jacked and you lose your hair, you're okay. Yes. It's if you're not jacked. That's Dude, what I'm actually. Jealous. I would totally shave my head, but I just would end up looking like an angry like nationalist or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> just, like, I can't. I can't pull that off. Some white dude. supremacist guys. Yeah. that mustache, dude. Oh, my, I know. I mustache and a bald head. And, and, like, yeah. Dude, it's or a, a cop, full uniform bro. over like here. A cop. Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, I can't. I can't pull it off. No, no, grow it out long, bro. Yeah. Grow it out long. No, you have gray hair. Yours is you have, beautiful. Yeah, you have gray hair. Look at that. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. You could clean it's, it. You no, could clean a cast iron pan with that. with that. I actually get I mad. I actually get really mad at you that you wear a hat as much as you wear a hat. It's like, dude, if I had hair like that, I would do it he every day. He just doesn't like combing his hair, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm lazy. lazy. It's great hair, though, dude. You should rock that. I like wearing hats. Do that more often for sure. Nice. Right. Shout out. Um, did we? Did I shout out uh, Dr. Lauren? Have I shouted? If her you out? haven't, do it again. I, I don't think. Her. I don't think I have. She's awesome. Yeah, I I do. I, yeah, I wanted to do that because, and I'm glad that it played out the way it did. So we invited her on the GLP one group the other day, and I, I had been talking back and forth with her for a while now. That was the first time you really had had a chance to communicate like with her, her, right? Yeah, yeah, and I know you guys would. I she's Dr. You. Lauren Fitz yeah. on yeah. Instagram. She's really, really oh, she's good. great. So she was an anesthesiologist, like legit medical doctor, uh, and who left conventional medicine because she got super jaded, and so mm. now she does functional medicine, and you know. Uh, 
no no shade to chiropractors, uh, but oftentimes you'll see functional medicine practitioners come from that space. Rarely do you see like a medical, you know, a, like a medical MD come from and then go to functional medicine. Mm -hmm. So she's got all that background plus functional medicine. Um, and so she's amazing when it comes to like things like peptides, GLP-1, and just overall health. Very knowledgeable. She's also got a, a story too. Like I think she went to perimenopause at a very young age yeah, too. So she yeah. kind of has her own journey that, yep. that led her that direction too. And so, yeah, no, she's incredible. Incredible content, uh, great communicator. Yeah. Uh, and just we're happy to have her alongside us supporting our community and stuff like that. So if you're not following her on Instagram already, make sure you guys give her a follow. If you've heard of all the benefits of CBD, you got to check out Ned. They use full spectrum hemp oil extract. So this is high in CBD, but all the other cannabinoids that help the CBD to work better. So it's great for anxiety, sleep. They have products that help produce feelings of euphoria. That's their brain blend, my favorite product. They have lots of different things, but again, it's full spectrum hemp oil extracts with high levels of CBD. You won't find this anywhere else. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 20% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from a man with a mission. What are some quick, no equipment exercises you can do during vacations that can help you retain muscle? Pull up, you, push up, and squat. Yeah, or isometrics. I mean, isometrics are really, really effective at maintaining muscle mass, especially in a short period of time. Um, and you could do isometrics with nothing. I mean, that's yeah. just hold a position. It's unsexy, but yeah, it is pretty effective. It create tension, uh, especially if you can get a way to do overcoming isometrics where you're like pushing against an immovable object or something like that. Um, otherwise, I mean, what Adam said, that's that's always the game changer. Like find a place you can do a pull-up, do some push-ups, do some slow body weight squats. You know, what you need to do to maintain muscle is very little. Well, um, combining it, both your answers together, I mean, it's really, it's like the tempo of it and, you know, having those holds at the most difficult yeah. portion of the rep, uh, you know, can make it a lot more impactful for intensity and like kind of more bang for your buck that way. Now, I will say this, the kind of person that tends to ask this question, <laughs> probably the person who can take the time off, is probably yeah. <laughs> the person that will benefit from not exercising well, on their vacation. So you know, when you look at the data on uh, deload weeks, right? So a deload week is either you take time off, that's the old school way of doing it, or you do a dramatically reduced intensity and volume. You see tremendous gains in strength and performance following a deload week um, with people who train very consistently. And so if you're the kind of person that's like, hey, uh, how do I not lose muscle on this you know, 10 day vacation? You're probably the person that never misses workouts. Oh, yes. You probably overdo it all the time. And taking that time off, is probably a good idea. Then you get back to the gym, and here's here's your here's how you know this is you. you, you go back to the gym, you're stronger. Yeah. Yep. Within two or three workouts, you're like, well, I'm stronger than I was before. It's because you needed the time off. That's what happens to me <laughs> every time I take time. Yeah, off. I'm just I'm you know I think <laughs> yeah. I I get where this comes from, and I know that for sure I would fall in this category in my 20s of like asking these types of questions where. It's very, very rare that I train on in, on vacation. I just don't think that's vacation. Maybe that's because this is my field too, or it's just like, it just feels like work yeah. to me. It's too much work. Totally. It's like, I want to not think about that type of stuff. <clears throat> now, what I will do, and, and you know, this is also about having a partner that's into this type of stuff too, is, and I think these guys are all very similar, especially Justin and Courtney. I know they're like this, where we'll go out and go do a lot of like, physical active, active things. Yeah, active yeah. things. So sure, yeah. I'm not squatting and deadlifting, but I also don't normally go on five mile hikes where I would do that on vacation because we're going to go look at scenery or we're going to go see something beautiful. Like uh, to me, that's the type of things that we we choose to do on vacation instead of just like laying around, which because, but I can also be the person who just does room service and puts his feet up by the pool 24 yeah. seven. So it really depends on what I feel like doing. I, and, uh, I used to work out on vacations because of the fear of losing uh, gains. And then it turned into, I like starting my day off this way. If I can, if not, it's not a big deal, but to start off my day because it starts off in a good mood. And because I, I think, and it would call me, I know I'm a weirdo, but I love uh, working out in different places. I like hotel gyms. I like different pieces of equipment. Maybe I, I think it would be, it's lost some of its luster now that I work out in a commercial gym. Because for years, I just worked out and I, I just used a squat rack, barbell dumbbells, and that was it. Um, so it was always to me something cool. Like, oh, I get to go use machine because hotel gyms almost never have free weights, but they always have machines. Um, but, uh, you know, again, if you're this person 
who never misses workouts, probably the best thing you could do for your muscles are, is not work out while you're on vacation. It's probably going to give you the better gains than, than working out. Next question is from Papa Schmop 121. Hmm, Just names. What yeah. does cardio look like to increase endurance without compromising muscle? I know it's terrible for fat loss, but how do you go about it just to be in good cardiovascular shape for real world situations? You see someone talking shit about me on the YouTube? No. Series? Yeah, yeah, of course. What they say? No, I mean, because the, the mic is on me, right? 24 <clears throat> yeah. 7. So, and this is the beginning. So, oh, how do you think my fucking 15 breathing? squat sounds like? Yeah. Oh. Sounds like I just ran. I and didn't then, see that. I yeah. Like, and of course, on. we're going to get people yeah. who know that we talk about. You know, not doing cardio when you're trying to build and sculpt like the, like the squats you're doing isn't going to help build. Well, and this is why I brought that yeah. up was because this is what's so funny to me is this like I mean, of course somebody may say, well, oh, this, this is probably why these guys don't you know they should probably do some cardio sounding the way he sounds right now when he's doing squats. It's like yeah, absolutely. You now, literally just told people you didn't work out at all for. Three I months. know, and and if you compare <laughs> you compare that exact video to the one that I just shot yesterday. And I'm moving three times the weight for just as many reps. And I'm like, I'm moving. Like, it's already building. And yeah. so I just think that I'm always going to – I'm going to exhaust that way of building cardiovascular endurance before I go get on a treadmill or go for a run. Mm -hmm. Even if my goal is, is that I want to build some cardiovascular endurance, I'm, I'm still not going to go get on a treadmill for 30 minutes and go for a run. I'm more likely to adjust my programming – to make that like really challenging. I'll tell you right now, you do some exercises like squats or lunges and you superset it with something else or you cut rust periods to one minute and you got to have some <clears throat> serious cardiovascular endurance to power through a 50 if minute you train with any kind of inter yeah. intensity. Yes, right. Yeah, like the question is how do you increase endurance without compromising muscle? So that's the that's the the, the kicker here, right? How do I get endurance Without compromising muscle, your uh, activity. Yeah, you, you, you overall you, activity. You you work. What you do is you pick a form of cardio that's more like strength training, if that's what you want. So uh, sprinting, hit, uh, that's going to give you endurance, uh, but it's more like strength training than traditional cardio. Or you do a s sets of twenty five or thirty reps with a barbell squat, yeah. uh, and then see what happens. You know, or you know, twenty five reps on other full body kind of you know strength training. That's exercise. what's so important about this question is the way it's worded is the way we communicate most of the time. That's my goal too. Yeah. Right now, my goal is not to prove to some internet troll that I can beat him in the the the, the mile. Like if that was my goal, then I would be running a mile yeah. and, and getting and building that endurance fast and good. But my goal is to can I build muscle and lean out simultaneously? Can I hover at that sweet spot of continuing to change my physique while also improving all these other absolutely I can. And it's not by getting on a treadmill and running. If that was the goal, then that's what I would do. But this is this is what we get asked most of the time, which is I want to build some cardiovascular endurance, but I care more about my physique and I don't want, and I want to build muscle. And so is there a way to do it? Well, yeah, then the answer is to do it through lifting weights. There's be surprised how much endurance you can build just by doing that. Next question is from Tala K. Hader. What's your take on Pilates? Cute. Yeah. So <laughs> Pilates is, um, I mean, it's, it's activity. So it's movement. If applied appropriately, um, it's going to improve your health. It's going to improve some of your mobility and stability. Um, if you like it and you do it right, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, if you have a specific goal, then I can give you a better answer, right? So if your goal is, I want to build maximum endurance, then don't do Pilates. If your goal is, I want to build uh, a, a really sculpted physique, then I'm going to say, then, then pick something else because it's not Pilates. In terms of the adaptations that it induces in the body, I mean, they're very short ranges of motion. You're going to increase stability in the ranges of motion that you train in. I mean, Pilates was, was originally invented to, to help uh, dancers, but I think it was ballet dancers in particular. It got really popular because uh, when people, because Pilates came from the ballet world, you had a lot of women that said, oh, I want to look like yeah, a ballerina. I a body like that. I want to look like a ballerina, so maybe that's what I should do. And they had brilliant marketing. Pilates said things like, don't build bulky muscles, build long, lean muscles. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's so, it's false. It's false advertising. Your muscles build or they shrink. Uh, that's it. So you don't build long, lean muscles. You just build muscle. If you have long muscles, because you have long muscle attachments, if you're lean, it's because you're lean. If you want a sculpted physique, strength training will get you there way faster with less work than Pilates, but it just is a form of activity if you like it and it's appropriate. This is a simpler way that I say this to my clients that ask this question. If 
you are doing two to three times a week of full body weight training and you like to do Pilates in addition to that, I love it. If Pilates is taking the place of two or three of those days that you could could be strength training, get rid of it. Yeah. It's that simple. Unless like, you just love it. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, okay, if you just absolutely love But most people are asking this question because they're per, trying to pursue some sort of a goal and they want to know what we think yes. about it towards yes. whatever goal said goal is. And unless your goal is getting good at Pilates, that's the only, that's the only reason why I would encourage it to ever replace three days a week of strength training. If you're not training three days a week of strength training and Pilates is taking one of those three days, you're losing, okay? You would be winning way more by doing an extra day of the strength training than doing Pilates. If you already do three days of full body strength training and then, you know, once or twice a week you love to go Pilates, hell yeah, keep doing it, especially if you like it. Love it, keep going. Get- it's like another form. It's like, it'd be like me telling somebody who loves to go for hikes on Saturday to stop hiking on Saturday. But I would do, you know, if someone said, Adam, I'm only going to do something once a week. Should I go do a long hike for two hours or should I strength train? I'm going to tell them to strength train. You're going to get way more bang for your buck by doing that in all pursuits of health by doing that. But in addition to, then yeah, I love Pilates. Do you guys remember when we did that class? There was that woman that wanted yes. us to take a Pilates class. Yes. And then and you could tell was she that was Pilates. It was Pilates. It was like a Pilates. But it was class. without the reformer, right? So it was Pilates without the reformer. It was bar. That's what it's called. A bar, uh, bar, bar. Yeah, so it was yeah. like it was like a like a branch off of it, right? Yeah. And and I remember I mean you could tell you're just gonna piss off all these these bar ladies. Whatever. Now. She looked this at us is not Pilates and, Sal. No, it wasn't. This Sorry. Fine. It was guys. bar. <laughs> but she looked at us and thought, and you could tell she was like, Oh, I'm gonna break these guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. She was, and she tried to Hey, she did all right. Hey, she tried she to did break all right. Oh, like, <laughs> lateral like lunging and drumming yeah. sticks. Uh, like, no, 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 we didn't do that. What the fuck am I doing? They did that in that class at that place. <laughs> oh my god! I know that was hilarious. She did. She broke us off. Yeah. You know, so yeah. good for you. <laughs> like, I'll come straight train with me. I'll do the same thing. <laughs> you know? But you know, with that, with, what I'm, what I'm getting at with that is that the, the, the physical attributes that you develop, uh, the, the performance attributes, attributes you develop are, are relatively specific to what you do. So, yeah. If you're really good at strength training, you're and you go do Pilates, it's gonna be hard, yeah. and vice versa. But see, but, but in terms of just results, longevity, That's mobility, what, um, you know, strengthening your bones, uh, like you know, hormone balance. Um, I mean, you name it. Better exercise. If you're indifferent to what form of exercise, uh, then then strength training so, is, is the best one. So for future questions that people send in, you need to finish the sentence. Tell us what your goal is. What is your take on Pilates for? And then say your goal or whatever it is that you're trying to acquire from doing Pilates, then we can really answer this question accurately. But if you just ask me, generally speaking, what I think of Pilates, what I think of yoga, what I think of swimming, what do I think of? They're all good. They're all forms of activity and movement that are are beneficial for the body. But context matters so much when talking about all these different modalities and what is that modality replacing? Or is it in addition to the things that we think are foundational that you should? And be the other doing? thing too that just you just you just reminded me, Justin. So much of our industry, uh, it becomes this new fad, it's an weird way. Yes, mm-hmm. entertainment form of exercise, which is a terrible. It just category. doesn't work at getting people to be consistent long term. It just doesn't, and that's why there's so many fads. Like yeah. there was one class I saw got popular. Where these, it was, it, it, there's these shoes that had like these little springs on them and they're just bouncing around. There's another one where you're hanging from silks and you're swinging, doing different. And they just, they, they invent these things to, to create this kind of fun entertainment form to of trick activity. trick all your Karens. But it's not, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. And you get your hair done. You're tricking all helping. these Karens all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get your Starbucks yeah. and get your hair done. What's down? the version for men for that kind of stuff? Are these men retreats? Would you say men retreats are like the, the version? Oh, that's a good oh, one. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the masculine yeah, retreats. Yeah, yell at each other's face. And like yell at like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, probably yeah. the same, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd say that's a, that. that's a pretty good yeah. comparison. <laughs> Next question is from Bridles and Barbells. What are your thoughts on California banning artificial food dyes? You know, here's the deal. Uh, I am, I, 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 I typically don't like regulations around choices for adults. Here's why I support this. By the way, California, it's like a broken clock. They're, they're, they're going to be right <laughs> sometimes because a lot of things that we ban here are just ridiculous. But food dyes, I think the people that are going to be impacted the most with this are children. And I think that's a good thing. Look at the foods that are advertised to children versus the ones that are advertised to adults. Now, vast majority of these processed foods are bad across the board, but the kids' ones are the worst. Kids' ones are the absolute worst. Um, and they're, they're, they're filled with all these food dyes and, and, and preservatives and additives. 
that uh, we're now realizing have an impact on a child's behavior, on how their brains function. We now know there's some connection to hyperactivity, which by the way, you know, you think, oh, what's the big deal? Your kid's hyperactive. Well, that means there's something happening in their brain. There's something happening in their brain that's making them feel uh, or act in a particular way. So I'm, I'm in support of regulations around children's foods, the foods that are marketed to kids and what we give to children, uh, because I think that's just not fair. I, I think it's moot. I'd say this is, this doesn't matter. I just, I don't, I don't think it's going to move the needle in any way. It's probably uh, California's way of virtue signaling in a way. I don't think it's it's going to do anything. It's still at the end of the day, as parents, it's our responsibility to parent our kids and to teach them good values around food and nutrition and exercise. And banning something uh, that you can no longer sell in a grocery store is not going to solve that. You know, the the same parent that probably doesn't give two shits or understands anything about food dyes is also feeding their kid cupcakes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So what the fuck does it matter? I don't think it's going to solve anything. I think it's just a, it's a massive virtue Here's signal. Here's the downstream. Or, or there's something else. There, there's some political game that is being played you don't even know behind the scenes. Like, it's a power move to fuck mm. some company over mm. who didn't contribute to somebody's campaign. Has nothing to do with caring You know, about it could people. be. But I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you the downstream effects. Probably, California's such a big right. such a big market that if you're a food, if, you're, if you manufacture Cheetos and you're like, great, now we can't sell our Cheeto formula to California, you're probably going to change it for the rest of the country. Because we're such a big market that it's probably going to influence, unless it gets overturned somehow, it's probably going to influence uh, the rest what of the market. What business is the California like? You know, like what what are, what are we doing here to benefit? <laughs> it's like mm. I don't know. It's this is tough. It it probably is. I, I agree. I think it's a little bit of uh, of um, virtue, virtue signaling. Yeah, but it's either that or I literally think there's probably a political. Political bullshit. Yeah. That's a game being played. You know Most what this stuff is, is that. You know what this is going to do. The positive, that I think, it's just bringing more awareness. That's what I think. Because yeah. ten years ago, if you said red dye number forty and yellow dye number whatever <laughs> is making my kid act weird, they would laugh at you. They'd laugh at you. Yeah, that's that. fair. I'll take. I'll take yeah. that. I'll take that. The, that's probably the biggest positive from this is that there's a there's a massive amount of people that are completely clueless about that are, are going to raise an eyebrow. Like, Whoa, artificial food dyes are bad. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That's interesting. We banned it. It must be bad. Like, so maybe that, you know, and here's the deal too. Like, um, a lot of parents need help from the culture and it's unfortunate, but it's true. You're right. I think it's a parent's responsibility. There's a lot of parents out there. They're just, they're screwed. They got no time. They got no time. They got no. And so they just leave it up to the public schools. They leave it up to, YouTube. you know, government. And so will it, can it help? I don't know how much of an impact this will have. Nothing. But I think if we stopped advertising no. garbage to kids or just advertising to kids in general, I think that should be banned. Don't advertise anybody who's not an adult. Yeah. I think that would have a massive or pharmaceuticals. Positive. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, a big, no more drug. You guys heard that study at a, at a the, uh, was it Marine County that came out a while ago? It was the first study they ever saw where autism rates dropped. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I talked about that yep, in a previous you did, episode. You did say that. Yep, yeah. yep. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.